Hey guys, welcome back to Cook Like Sasha. Today I'll be making a rich pumpkin soup with cow skin, chicken foot, a variety of vegetables and some ground provisions. It's very easy to do, so if you want to see how I did it, just keep watching. Today I'll be using this convenient soup pack that I saw in the supermarket. It comes with everything that you need to make a very small pot of soup. And it's perfect if you're on a budget. In addition to that, I picked up this pack of best dressed chicken foot, and yeah, it's been a while, so I'm looking forward to it, guys. Then, now for the star of the show, we have our cow skin. Oh my god, I love cow skin in a soup, guys. Just comment down below and let me know if you love cow skin. Let me know if you've ever had it before. So, here. I'm just cutting up my cow skin. Guys, did you know that cow skin is rich in collagen? Yes, collagen is actually the most abundant protein in the body. It is a major component of your skin and it's actually what makes the skin look young and fresh. Why is it that you think that people are always buying skin creams rich in collagen? Because it's it's actually very good for the skin and it makes you look younger for longer. Collagen also makes up a major part of our bones, tendons, joints and other connective tissues. These are things that wear down in our body the older we get. So it is very important for us to eat foods that are rich in collagen like cow skin so we can build up our collagen reserves. Eating foods that are rich in collagen like cow skin, chicken foot or even jello can help to relieve joint pain, aid in building up your skin, preventing wrinkles and actually prevent bone loss. Here I have my chicken foot that I've washed and cleaned up by removing the nails. Now they're ready to cook. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put on a pot of water. I'm actually going to use a pressure pot. So I'm going to put on a pot of water in the pressure pot and I'm going to add the chicken foot and the cow skin together and allow them to pressure cook for about 8 to 10 minutes. I'm going to monitor to ensure that the chicken foot don't cook out because you know chicken foot they're easier to cook than the cow skin. Guys just bear with me. I am not going to say chicken feet. I'm a Jamaican. One chicken foot, two chicken foot, same thing. So what I'm doing now, I'm cutting the chicken foot in two so that they're more manageable, especially for the bigger ones. Yes. Yeah, so before I put the chicken foot and the cow skin in the pressure pot, I'm just going to remove the skins from some garlic cloves and add that to the hot water this is going to give the meat a very good flavor and we're actually building up the soup water guys so don't put a lot of water in the pot just enough to cover the meat and allow it to pressure cook here i'm adding some salt before closing the lid of the pressure pot so that the meat can get some flavor So while that is pressure cooking, I'm going to prepare the vegetables that I need for the soup water. So I have my carrot chopped up, my turnip, and now I am just cutting up my chocho. Chocho kind of hard to cut up. The skin is very hard, so this is just my way of cutting it up to make it a little bit easier. So I just cut them in smaller pieces and then I remove the heart and the skin. That pumpkin that was in the soup mix, what I did, I just cut it up into small pieces, put it in my blender and make a nice rich pumpkin puree. This is what I'm going to add to my soup to give it that beautiful pumpkin color. Um, this is just one way of doing it. The other way is to put the pumpkin in the water and just allow it to boil out for as long as the soup cooks. So while all that is done, I am now transferring my cooked cow skin look at that it's so nice and soft and just gummy like i don't like when it cook out too much and you can see that the, the chicken foot is nicely done as well and just look at that rich water guys 
know what I'm doing. I'm just adding the pumpkin puree, blend of pumpkin. I'm just going to add it to that rich meat water and I'm going to allow this to boil up and then guys we're on our way to making a nice rich pumpkin soup just look at that color remember to like comment share and subscribe and remember to click that bell icon so you'll never miss another video and the longer the soup boils the thicker and the richer it becomes because the cow skin it has that gelatin in it that gives the soup that nice thick rich body so now what i'm doing i'm adding in my pump not pumpkin i'm adding in my turnips and i'm adding in the chocho i'm going to leave the carrots for last because for me personally i like when my carrots are kind of chewy I don't like them to be mashed out in the soup so while that is boiling up I am now going to make some dumplings and I like cornmeal dumplings so I'm going to add some flour about a cup or two and a tablespoon of cornmeal with a little bit of salt and then I'm going to use some water to knead up the flour I'm pouring the water into a well and yes I'm using a spoon to make the flour to make the dough this is what I normally do and yeah it works it's quick it's easy it's less messy but it does take practice so if you don't know where I do the flour I will spoil because it kind of have to develop a feel for the flour to know when it need water or when to stop adding water so if you wear long nails, this is the perfect technique for you to make your flour, to make your dumpling, to knead up, you know. You don't have to sink your nails into the flour. It's cleaner, it's less messy, it's more sanitary. And yeah, it's pretty simple and easy to do. So at this point, what I'm going to do I'm going to just add a little bit of water, a little bit at a time, like sprinkle it on and then keep folding in the flour, folding in the flour until the dough comes together. Once the dough has been formed, what you're going to do now is you just use the back of your hand to punch in the dough and knead in the dry spots and you are pretty much done. Here I'm just pinching the dough to the side, you know, the size of my dumplings. I don't like the big broad cat wheel them in my soup, as my mother would call them cat wheel. I don't like when the dumpling them too big in a soup. I kind of like medium sized spinners or like small, some little small meat dumplings. So I'm just pinching off and deciding, you know, how much dumpling more to my soup and how big they're going to be. So this part is totally optional. You decide how big you want your dumplings. I like mine nice and small and neat. But you decide if you want spinners, if you want cat wheel, if you want some big long coat of in there. You decide what you want. Or if you don't want dumplings, you can totally skip it. At the same time, I'm going to add some Irish potatoes. I'm going to cut them pretty small so that they cook quickly and evenly. Here, I'm going to chop up a small piece of soft white yam and I'm going to add it to the pot and allow it to cook with everything else. Guys, comment below and let me know what's your favorite thing to have in soup. Mine is green banana, turnip, 
and bread fruits. Like if I soup up green bread fruit tonight, oh my god, it's a winner. After the yam and everything is almost done cooking in the soup, it's time to add our soup mix. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a After adding the grease cock soup mix, what I did, I just added a few pimento berries on top and allowed the soup to simmer for about 15 minutes. And then this is what my soup is looking like in the end. It's so rich and beautiful, guys. Just take in my soup. So guys, after everything has cooked down and well simmer, this is what my soup is looking like. It's very rich, it was very delicious, very comforting, perfect for those days when you just, you know, you just want a break from everything, especially if it's raining and it's kind of chilly. Trust me, this soup is like everything. And you know what I really love about it? the thyme leaves like look how the thyme leaves just cook out and just disperse in the soup and the cold skin it was perfectly done and just gummy and nice the chicken foot oh oh my god guys you just have to experience this for yourself if you've never had this before please do give it a try and comment and let me know what you guys think Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Let me know what you guys want to see next. If you have any suggestions, put them in the comment section below. And until next time, this is Cook Like Sasha. Bye, guys.